I do need to get into the rest of AEW Dynamite, which took place last night from the Freeman Coliseum in San Antonio, Texas. We had match five of the best of seven start off the show. The Elite beat the Death Triangle to bring it to three to two. Match six taking place next week. I, I, what else can you say <laughs> about, you know, these guys going at it? There have been a lot of callbacks to the NBA. Uh, I, I I assume just with their gear, with the the Jordans and the whether they real or not, the whatever the fake designer Jordans that they were wearing and all that sort of stuff. The you know the call back to Willis Reed or you know Paul Pierce or whoever you know whoever came back in the game, whoever came back in the playoffs. You know, there's been seemingly a lot of of tie-ins to the NBA there, but another. Another really good match. I can't – very busy. If you – I can't. I don't want to bash it or anything like that. I got to be honest. I'm kind of ready for this series to be over. I mean, I have no animus towards these matches. They're fun as hell. I mean, some of the spots, you know, you see them come in where it's just like, you know, boom, one guy goes down. This happens. This happens. Phoenix flies off the ropes, all that sort of – it is really fun. But I'm kind of ready for it to wrap up. But they did get it. Look, I'm not saying they got it out of the way early. It was a hell of a start to the show, I thought, and a very exciting start. Then we got MJF's promo on Brian Danielson that was taped uh, last week after his match, uh, laying it down to him. At that point, when we came back from break, uh, Chris Jericho uh, torched uh, uh, Action Andretti in the back. That's when that had happened. Then there was an in-ring interview with Renee and Brian Danielson and talks about his, his life in Texas, talked about his first match at the Far West Rodeo, talked about Rudy Boy Gonzalez and Shawn Michaels training him, which got an HBK chant and got me thinking, what happened to Michael Shane? Remember Michael Shane in TNA? He was Shawn Michaels' nephew or something like that, and who was he with? He was with, who was Frankie Kazarian's wife? I think he was linked with her for a while as a valet, but long story short, uh, his career seemed to be very short, unless he had a long one somewhere under the radar that I, that I had never heard about. But Danielson uh, made this a lot about William Regal and talked about him uh, in glowing terms, said he made him the wrestler that he was today, that he, he taught him that there were consequences to his actions. He then called out MJF. Instead of getting them, he got Ethan Page and Stokely Hathaway instead. Insults flying back and forth. Very good one with Stokely Hathaway. <laughs> Call him a raggedy bee. I won't say anything and get myself suspended again here before the uh, Christmas break. And long story short, Danielson challenged him to get in the ring. Page punked out, said he'd rather do it next week. And as the segment wrapped up, the man that Brian Danielson called out initially was shown to be in the building, MJF, at a monitor in the back, smiling. So something devious may be taking place there as it comes to Ethan Page and Brian Danielson. But much like what's going on, it looks like there's a little feud here with, with Jericho and, 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 uh, and Ricky Starks. This is a nice road bump. Uh, you know, this, I, I like Danielson and Ethan Page before we get to MJF. I wonder the way all the things ended up changing around. We hear that it was supposed to be CM Punk getting tied in with the uh, with Stokely Hathaway's group. That obviously didn't end up happening. They've had to do some things on the fly here. I don't know what's going on with Ethan Page and what he's going to have going on after this, but a Page-Danielson match leading into MJF, I think that's good because, look, he got to the, the finals of the Battle Royal, which, by the way, I don't know if I had a chance to mention it when that happened. Them going out of the ring and, and Ricky Starks holding on when, when Ethan Page went flying out of the ring, I thought that looked great. I like Ethan Page a lot. I think this is a good time, much like Ricky Starks. Keep him strong. We know right now, here's where he's at. If Ricky Starks is here, if MJF's here, Ricky Starks is here, Ethan Page, right down here. Keep him there. Keep him there. So when you have somebody that you need to help keep building up, like your action Andretti's, people like that, when they hit Ethan Page, okay, good, it's a step up. And I don't want to see Page fall too back, you know, far, fall further down here either. I like him a lot. I think he's really talented. 
levels is an issue in AEW that they have problems with. And I know a lot of it's the fans because of how people are conditioned now. Everybody's got to win all the time. They've lost three in a row. They're buried. No, no. There's got to be levels to this stuff. There's got to be multiples on the cards, multiple people in multiple positions, okay? It's a, it's a sliding game of up and down. You can keep six people at the top in the mix. Right under them, you keep six more strong. Right under them, there's levels to this stuff is what I'm saying, okay? And I hope they continue to do that with Ethan Page. Then it was time for John Moxley's promo on Hangman Page and Darius Martin. I like this a lot. Hangman Page's promo was fine as to why he's an emotional guy. He's the new cowboy. He's the cowboy for a new generation. He's a sensitive dude, and I can appreciate that. I've hated a lot of his builds. I've hated a lot of his storylines. I shouldn't say hate. I, I've disliked a lot of them immensely, but I get it when he said, man, I looked at my daughter, and I couldn't remember her name, and I was so pissed off. But John Moxley responded like he should have. This ain't ballet. This is a sport where I am paid to knock you out and beat you, and I guess I'm pretty good at my job. I like that very much. Am I the bad guy? No, he's not the bad guy. But he goes out there and faces Darius Martin. I thought that I'll get to that a little bit later on uh, because there was a little bit more in the middle here, including Samoa Joe wishing us happy holidays, reminding us that uh, on Rampage or uh, next week he plans on wrecking Wardlow. Then it was Hook who... Quickly choked out Exodus Prime. Still not sure how I feel about that name. It does make me laugh a little bit. But after he finished him off with a choke, Jack Perry was shown getting wrecked in the back by Lee Moriarty and Big Bill, who ultimately choke slammed him into a dumpster. So we are speeding down the uh, the barrel to get to that tag team match, which again, look, for to keep everybody active in the mix, something going on. I don't think anybody can really complain about that at all. Then it was time for John Moxley to defeat Darius Martin, and this was at least Darius's first singles match on Dynamite, if not his first singles match at all in AEW. Obviously, we saw Dante a lot when, when Darius was out hurt, but uh, good showing for Martin. Bottom line, good showing. Moxley eventually hit the Death Rider, got the victory. I thought that was a really good match. That is then followed up by a very good Powerhouse Hobbs vignette. And you're right here with Powerhouse Hobbs because the promo that he cut was really good and the vignette was really good. And he talks about being shot, being stabbed, being abused, being put down by family and how that can, can make somebody nasty like he's feeling right now and bloodthirsty the thing is he's such a badass that sooner or later even if the fans i mean i can't believe fans are gonna really boo him all that much we will see but you got to be careful because if you want this guy to be a killer and i know he can be a killer be careful because he's got the type of story he's got the type of look that people and and from what we've seen with the microphone he's got the type of rap that people want to get behind. You know, when he and Starks were standing out there on the bay in Cleveland during that winter is coming show or whatever it was, when he's standing out there in the overalls, no shirt on with the fur coat, like that was it right there. It's like that dude, that's going to be a world champion one day, guaranteed. A vignette then of Sanjay Dutt rapping to the acclaimed instrumental. It was not good. It was designed to not be good. It was designed to be annoying. And boy, is Sanjay Dutt annoying uh, on this show. And I like Sanjay Dutt, but damn it, I hate this character. I hate seeing him there taking up space. And I like Jay Lethal. And I like Jeff Jarrett. I've said that a lot on this show, but they were being goofballs throughout the whole thing. AEW World Tag Team title match between Jarrett and Lethal on Rampage. The better less the better said on Keith Lee Swerve Strickland with Rick Ross mediating Rick Ross if you can keep him under control and on a second second delay I'd like to see him on TV all the time he's fantastic thing went on for too long they definitely needed to tighten it up it would have made it a lot more it would have made it a lot more appealing if they had cut a lot of the time down bottom line Parker Boudreaux and Brandon Goatsman a former minor league baseball player they are part of Swerve Strickland's new crew not sure how I feel about that but I do know how I feel about Jamie Hayter and Hikaru Shida and I'll tell you about it when we get back from break Wrestling Observer Live <laughs> 
Back on the show, Mike Semper, Vivi here. Whether you're Wrestling Observer Live, Big Boss Man Brian Alvarez will be back tomorrow in his co-hosting chair. Apparently, he uh, he already has dipped into the Twitch chat earlier on today uh, during my first segment when I was passionately talking about how much I, I thought of the Jericho Starks and Jericho Andretti segments. So he has made his presence known. He will be back tomorrow. And in fact, he'll be back for subscribers tonight at WrestlingObserver.com when he joins up with Brian and Vinny again after the very successful Brian and Vinny and Lance show. Plus, he's got shows coming up with Dave on Christmas night as well, too. But before we get out of here, Hikaru Shida, Jamie Hayter, if you've heard about this match, you've probably heard it was really good. That's because it was really good. Jamie Hayter is fantastic. Hikaru Shida, I know there's a lot of people that like Riho. I know there's a lot of people that like Yuka Sakazaki. There are a lot of women that have been brought in from Japan. There were no better, I think, to fit AEW than Hikaru Shida. And Jamie Hayter and she had a banger last night. And Jamie Hayter... With her experience in stardom, you know, a lot of people don't remember that when she was over there with B Priestley, but boy, did she take what she learned there and what she was doing over in Pro Wrestling Eve and doing all the stuff in the UK. They have, you know, she, give her the credit, I'll give her all the credit in the world for getting into the type of shape she's in now. I don't know who is in charge of the makeover. Maybe everybody gets some credit for that. I know Britt Baker deserves credit as far as being somebody she wanted to bring over. But AEW gets a lot of credit for featuring her, not screwing this up, and keeping that trio together. If you have not seen this match, I would suggest going out of your way and watching it. If you don't watch anything, you got it on DVR, watch it. If they have it posted up somewhere on AEW socials, watch it. A hell of a match. It really was. Jamie Hayter gets the victory. We'll see what happens on January 11th coming up with that big tag match. But I know what I got to do now, and that's get out of here. The WWE legendary joke Joke book. book. Why do WWE superstars' fingers hurt? (laughs) (laughs) Why were Gene Erkerlund's pants always so angry? Erkerlund? (laughs) Where does Beth Phoenix shop online? Amazon? The Glamazon! Oh, yeah. No. No. I mean, no. <laughs> no, that is the answer. Glamazon. That's what I said. <laughs> what? You said Gramazon. No, I said Glamazon. <laughs> oh, there should be a Gramazon. <laughs> yeah, Gramazon, actually. You get, like, like, puppy you get it to you real slow. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.